folks, I'm L.A. Little, and this is your daily T.A. Rep. Well, we take a look at these markets, and we do it from a neoclassical perspective. Each time, asking ourselves, what happened today? And what does it tell us about the coming ones? I do the show four times a week, Monday through Thursday, live at 9 o'clock Eastern Time, here from the base of what was a snowy day in the Rocky Mountains. It is the middle of April, we're still getting our snow. Yeah, it's probably about done. This is probably the last big one, but uh, it's always interesting here in the mountains. So, um, <clears throat> excuse me. We had a, had a big day today, a big reversal today. Uh, if you want to, um, I'm probably gonna have some time uh, you know, during, during the show to answer some questions. You can send a text message here. You can email me there if you want. And of course, if you're logged in, you can just type it into the chat session. I'll take it from there. So feel free to ask anything. I mean, if you have a general question, if you have a stock question, I always ask if you can, try to give me some context. You know, what kind of time frame, what you're trying to do so that I have something to work with when I'm looking at whatever it is that you're asking me. So without further ado, what happened today? Well, uh, it was an interesting day. We ended up bouncing uh, last night on the weekly show. We were talking about uh, that is probably what we were going to see. 146 and a half higher, 16.173 and a quarter on the Dow. S&P's tacked on uh, almost 15, 1830 and a half. Composite 23 higher, 40, 22 and a half. The industrial, uh, excuse me, the index. The NDX, 3474 and a half, that was 27 and three quarters higher. And as you can see, those were the leaders, right? S&P, the NDX, the composite. Russell was trailing 11, 15, 35, couldn't get going. Only four points higher, uh, 0.33% basically, 0.35. Uh, gold was up. Uh, I've got to start trying to take these snapshots earlier. Gold was up about eight bucks today. Oil, but commodities in general were up. Um, pretty much across the board, the dollar was stronger, up quarter percent. Now the dollar is sold off still down at the lows, uh, so that may still not last in terms of what the dollar is doing. If we go and look at the indexes, uh, because you know what we had out here today is we had. Remember. You know, let's get the context back here as we get going. We had swing point lows broke, right? Three of them. Those three swing point lows, when they break, they typically lead to two to three bars extension to the downside. And so you had a bar, you know, and, and, and this one really didn't extend. It's it's actually an inside day today. Uh, so that, that's an inside bar. We did get extensions on other indexes, but not here. And what that tells you, or at least what it tries to tell me, is that unless this thing starts to extend to the downside tomorrow, we're probably just not going to get what you typically get. And if that's the case, that's kind of telling you that it's a little bit stronger than you think it is, because usually you break three of these guys, you're going to extend lower. Now, we knew coming into this that there was extenuating circumstances. And what I mean by that is that this wasn't the typical break in that we broke, had gone up far enough to where an ABCD structure was already in place and it was almost done. And so that extension down has already extended in terms of that structure. And that structure was the same on all the indexes, not just the S&P. So if I pop over and we'll just go to one that did set a lower low today, which is the NASDAQ composite, over here we had an ABCD structure down. Um, none of them completed, but they all came within about a half a percent now. And here's that ABCD structure, and these are bearish ABCDs. And so it projected right back into this support zone, got right underneath today, back over, less volume. You know, we can call it a two-bar reversal. That's a little bit of a stretch. Uh, we really did get an under-over. In other words, we went under, back over. Um, I, you know, we're just not that extended in terms of a straight-down type of move that you like to see when you get these 
you know, under overs or, or over unders. For example, here, if we go back, I'll show you what I mean. Here we're going up, we're going up, right? We don't get an over under until right there, this bar. And you see how it went over, back under, but it, it had higher volume. It did sell off the next day because of the over under, but then it went right back up. And then you got the real signal right there. There's an over, a back under, lighter volume, right? Those two bars, lighter volume down here on the two bars. That's a reversal. And that's an extended move. You know, you just go up, 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 up. And then finally you get, you get the right signal. Here your volume was too high, yeah, you got a pullback, but then it's bang right back the other way, right? So here you don't have that situation, but you do have ABCD structures that are completed, and that S&P, going back to it, that S&P looks like it probably has put in uh, that low uh, for now, right? And now what are you looking at? You're looking at retest regens. And so this one has a retest region here, has another one there, has another one inside that one, right? And when you put that congruent area together, you know, it's this area here. So you would have to expect they're going to try to take it back up into that area. Now that also happens to be, if I clean this up, it also happens to be, remember we had been looking at, for a very long time, three zones. We had a zone there, a zone up here, and another zone when we finally broke over it. That area that we just highlighted, of course, is right there where that zone is. So it's the difference between that first and second floor. Now we've created another zone, if you will, underneath all of this. And lo and behold, it's almost equidistant. And so as we come back up, now we're on the zero floor or something. I don't know what we're at. But we're coming back up and it looks to me like that's where it's going to try to get. Now, that's going to be a big test when it gets back up there because you've extended, you've done what you were supposed to do. You didn't quite get the push that you would like to have seen if you were trying to short this, for example, off this move. You would like one more bar extension. But you know, you don't always get everything. You got, you got the one day extension, the one bar extension, uh, and now it's popping back up. And you just have to respect it. You know, the market's going to do what the market does. It's not like we're going to tell it what to do. I'm not that big of a player, and I suspect you aren't either. NDX test lows again. Uh, this also finishes off ABCD. And the other, the other one that's really interesting is the Russell. The Russell under back over as well ABCD structure not quite complete but almost we could get one more test down here not on the Russell but on the S&P on the Dow uh, on the NDX all of those did not do under overs uh, but it doesn't appear to me that that's probably going to be the case now intraday today it was a wild day I mean it wasn't it wasn't a clean cut this is Friday, right? If we go back to Friday, remember we had uh, we had been selling off. It makes a little stand here. Here's one of those, you know, test of the lows, right? And then those buy programs come in. They're going to try to ramp it up, but then the sellers just go to work, right? And they sell it down. They finally break it down, come back up, try to test, and they'll close underneath that low. That's the sort of intraday stuff you get. And you can look at these and, you know, you can trade off of these if you want to trade intraday. Now, if I scroll this on over so that we pick up today, the first thing that we do today, which is usually not the best thing to do after you've been down for a while, is a gap up. Because that usually invites sellers. But today, that gap up actually held. We actually had some uh, good numbers on retail sales and so forth got a little bit of a pullback, and then once it held, right, then it was like off to the races kind of thing, right? But then what did it do? It ran out of steam, and then you come all the way back again. And when it breaks that low, the volume really comes, right? That's where the thing, I don't know about the volume, but that's where the, because I'm looking at the SPX here, uh, but that's where the break takes place. You get a fast extension down, 
And then what do they do? They take it straight back up. I mean, without a break, right into the close. Last 40 minutes or so, straight up, not a seller. You're back up towards the highs. And I suspect tomorrow you're going to see it try to get back over the highs. And if we go back one more time to the chart, and the reason I'm showing you that is, is that intraday, there's a lot of volatility, especially when you're trying to get a turn, right? And especially after you've had big sell-offs. I mean, these indexes, the Russell, the NDX, the, the, the NASDAQ, they've sold off, you know, depending on what they are, they've sold off top to bottom anywhere from 75 to 8.5%, 9%. That's a pretty big move. Now, it's over a month, over about seven weeks, actually, six, seven. Um, so it's kind of extended, you know, in, in that it's over a period of time, but it's a significant amount. And so valuations look a little bit better. You know, and everybody's trying to probe for the bottom. But at the same time, those that want to short it and break it down, right, they're going to keep trying to probe mm -hmm. it on any of those pushes higher. And that's kind of what you saw happening uh, when we were looking over here at intraday. That is what's taking place here, right? The market is just a series of tests. That's all it is. It tests up, it tests down. You know, if it can't, if it can't hold it back, like for example here, right, it's going to break it out and try to test up higher. It's going to test whatever's up there. What was up there? Well, if I pull this back two days, that was the last high. So you go try to test and break out that one. You can't? Well, then you're going to come back and test again. And you can see these tests, you know, whether you're looking at them intraday, you're looking at them on weeklies, wherever. Right? You can see that area, that was the defining area. That was the breakout over this high. Right? And once it tests there, goes back up and can't hold it, and then comes back and tests one more time, boom, back the other way, right? That's exactly how the market acts. That is price discovery. That is what's happening all the time, all day, every day. And it doesn't matter what time frame you're looking on. That is the sort of thing. That's how price finds equilibrium. Of course, equilibrium is always changing. So it's not static, right? It's always moving on you. And from that perspective, you know, you have to realize that uh, the market is a series of tests. We look at those tests to decide what's happening, and we look at it on usually longer-term time frames, unless you're trading the day trades, right? All right, let's go back uh, to the markets here. So the test here, you know, I talked about the retest regen on the, uh, the S&P. You're going to have the same thing here. Now, in both the S&P's case and the Russell's case, these retest regions, these bars, they measure fairly high up. So I know a lot of people do, for example, they do ABCD structures, and they live and die by that 62% Fibonacci retracement number. And, and so when this gets up above, you know, like here or someplace, you know, they're going to say, oh, it can't be an ABCD structure. Well, folks, it can come right back up here, do that retest region, just like we saw it fail before and give us the great signal, right? That was this one. What did it do? It came right back up there, tested, and came back down. There's no reason it can't come all the way back up here now, right, and test again and still fail. And it would just be a smaller ABCD structure. It means it's going to take more time to break it down if that's the way it plays out. You know, because that, you know, if I draw that one out starting here, that structure, if it comes all the way back up there, right, to about right there, that's only going to measure down into about this area, which is what? Get you back into these two big bars back here. And so it just, you know, it's going to have a harder time breaking it down when it comes back if that's what it does. Uh, but, you know, we're getting ahead of ourselves. Let's see what the retest regen when it gets there. It tried to come into the bottom of the bar. The bar, bar was 32, uh, 326. It came in with 311. doesn't have a volume. But that volume was really a measure of the low. Couldn't break it down on the low side. That thing wants to flip around and try to go higher. And that's probably what we will see uh, tomorrow. Um, let's go over and look at the sectors and see if they're telling us the same thing. Actually, before we do that, let me pop over to the world markets real quick. Uh, I want to go straight to Europe because Europe, Europe was really struggling today. 
Okay, that's a that's under over. That's going to try to fill the gap tonight. That's the CAX. Let's see what the DAX looks like. Uh, the DAX was weaker, and the DAX comes in actually reverses lower volume. That also wants to come up and test into the gap. And the FTSE is the weakest of the three. And the FTSE trades. 6537 yeah so that undercuts it doesn't have the volume into support that also is going to flip around so Europe is probably going to trade higher China won't come in you know first they couldn't go up now they can't come down so Hang Seng's a uh, little fade that one's going to try to trade up uh, same thing here the, the uh, Large cap uh, eight shares that are listed in Hong Kong look like they want to trade up. Taiwan, which has uh, been on a tear, comes back in, has no volume. This one actually looks like it may come in a little bit deeper and try to do that retest regen finally. And let me go over and check out Australia and um, Canada. Australia comes in. Yeah, that doesn't look bad. It's coming in on nothing. It looks like it's going to bounce down here. Test a little bit lower bounce. Canada couldn't hold, uh, but still looks okay. You know, Canada's, you know, these stocks that are setting up this way, or these indexes that are setting up this way with all these swing point lows, you know, the longer you go sideways, right, the more things build up. And in this case, they're all building up underneath on Canada versus overhead. So, you know, Canada better find a way to juice this thing or it's going to get a nice correction at some point. Okay, let's go back. I want to go to the sectors is where I was heading. I got sidetracked. Let's go over there real quick. I suspect these are going to show us um, nice pops up. But let's, let's see what they look like. Okay, so under, over, less volume. That's the transports. Uh, that looks fine. Let's see what the socks looks like. Uh, Sox didn't make a new low, actually had more volume, that's an inside day, that's actually better, not, not actually making a low, so uh, Sox is going to grind around there, it looks like. Sox may have already had it, remember we were talking about it should be a range trade now. Here's another inside day on the materials, um, really nothing there, so that, that one has no markings. XLE had a big day, this was the leader of the pack. So this one's going to do a test of all. And this, this will be the first of the sectors that do the test. And this one is going to come back into the breakdown area. And what I mean by that is there was two bars, these two bars, those days, uh, April 4th and April 7th. Those are the two bars that, that was the Friday, Monday bars, right? That was the big reversal on the employment numbers and then back down. XLE's first one in to come and test it. And you want to watch to see how these guys test it, right, when they, as they come back up there. Uh, if they test into that and get over it, that's a good sign. If they can't, well, it's a different sign. Here's that uh, area again, and you can see it looks very different on some of these charts versus the others, right? XLF being weaker got much deeper. XLF uh, comes back into resistance here. That's, that's going to be tough tomorrow for the XLF to actually lift. We have a bunch of uh, uh, earnings coming out. Um, we had Citigroup this morning. We've got uh, uh, several banks coming out this week, so we'll see if the XLF can lift or not. XLF actually needs to lift because the market's going to have a hard time getting much higher if it doesn't chip in. XLI under over, that looks fine too. So you're getting, you're getting the sort of action in in some of these sectors. That's two, that's three of them that look decent. One that's struggling, XLF. XLK gets over. That actually doesn't look good. So this gets back over. Test the top, can't hold it, right? And this was a break of multiple swing points as well. Um, this one, this one's gonna struggle. That's the technology sector. So financial technology uh, look like a struggle still. Let's go to the two safety guys. They shot. They have been doing well. That one still looks fine. The XLP, XLU. 
And that one's still hanging at the highs. How about the the healthcare, which has been getting clobbered? Healthcare is going to try to put in a move back up now. It's finished off an ABCD structure. And so that's a bounce play. And the discretionary, we had retail sales today. And boy, it didn't do anything for this, did it? Inside day, lower volume, that one doesn't tell you anything. So what you're going to want to watch is you're going to want to watch where, where appropriate that breakdown day here between the Friday and the Monday, right? The other piece, depending on where they broke, would be the retest regens. And in this case, you don't have one. It's already done it here. But any of those that are applicable would be what I would be watching as well. Let me see. Bonds, I believe, sold off a little bit today. Nothing major, though. They don't want to come back in very much, do they? That's an inside day as well. Inside days, to me, tell you nothing. Unless you've had a large run already. You know, so... I, I just, I don't get... You know, I don't have any great patterns off of inside days. Uh, let me see. What was the other one? Uh, bonds. Oh, gold. Let's see what gold... Actually, the dollar was... was up today gold goes up now gold test into man it just doesn't want to quit does it 127.94 and it closes under it and has less volume so it goes to the top all the way to the top of the zone the resistance zone test into it and this has just been you know you know, I'm not, I'm not much of a channel person, especially, you know, these angular channels. They don't mean much to me, but I'm sure there's a lot of people that will draw this in and look at it and say, oh, well, you know, we got a nice channel going. I used to look at this and say, okay, that's a bearish flag, although you would want it to be a little bit more this way uh, than straight up like it is or this 45 degree angle. But uh, that still looks like a failure into this bar. We'll see tomorrow. Uh, that should be the tell on it. And the dollar, I don't think, had any juice behind it. it. Tried to bounce and gave it up. Yeah, no juice. So it looks to me like uh, this market's got a lot of work to do. It got a start today. It was a good sign today for it to hold the lows, especially that last big program that came in the last 40 minutes and just drove it straight back up. What you want to see is you want to see it hold tomorrow and start to put in the sort of a rounding bottom that's, that's needed. Uh, if I go back here to the, uh, uh, this chart, you know, it's, it's, you know, I guess a rounding bottom is kind of a stretch here, but if you pull it back far enough, you can kind of see what I'm talking about. And that is, is that, you know, you can't put in a, you can't put in a low until you start finding some sort of a, a, a way to you know to round back up right and this this tested here broke it down again tested came down tried to test again this is kind of trying to move it you got a little scenario here if it gets over that you know it's about 1835 uh, you know then I think you're gonna see some folks come in here and think okay the bottoms in and I suspect as a result of that it's gonna lead to a larger move up and everybody's going to think it's going to new highs again. And, you know, heck, we've seen so many of those V-shaped reversals. I don't want to rule them out. But, uh, you know, like I said the last time we talked about them, I think it's going to be a lot harder to, to get a V-shaped reversal uh, right now than it has been over the last, you know, 16 months or whatever it's been. So I kind of like, I kind of like the way it's setting up here, though, for a decent bounce. Let's see if we got some questions. I'll try to answer them. Uh, yeah, Fidi is our, yeah, I was making a joke here, I, I, Federico, Fidi is his moniker, um, he trades with us and he comes in, usually comes in, you know, different times of the day, and it's just almost inevitably when he shows up in the trading room, you know, the market's reversed, so I was joking with him, you know, and I guess he's telling me he did it, <laughs> so that's cool. Uh, you know, I don't really have much else to say. If you got any questions, pop them to me. Let me quickly check and see if anybody's asked me something or texted me something. And let's see here. Uh, yeah, there's actually one question. 
question is on <laughs> one of the high flyers. I actually did a, I actually did a. If you want to watch it, I did a video this morning on Tesla and Netflix. And so there's a question here about Netflix. Let's see what Netflix looked did today. So Netflix, uh, that's not telling you anything yet. Yeah, I mean it could bounce, but it's not telling you anything. You know, it, it, it's you know. If anything, it's telling you it wants to go a little bit lower because it tested back into those two bars and couldn't get over them. So it did hold into that prior little low there. That's a slight positive. I would make this tell me more before I bought into it. Let's see what Tesla did. And Tesla also was one I featured this morning we were talking about. And this one also couldn't hold the prior low. And it's coming into... Twelve point nine million shares with one ninety nine thirty, and he stayed into it. Well, I you know these things are going to flip and they're going to flip fast when they do. But when I look at this, you know there actually is an ABCD structure lower. Looks like it measures to about there, about one maybe ninety one eighty eight or something. Um, that would bring it back into this little gap area. That might be the spot when it's time. But, you know, Tesla, who knows? These guys can go up 20 bucks in a day. I mean, I don't know what this number was from here to there, but that was at least 20. What was that? Good Lord, that was 40 bucks in a day. <laughs> so, you know, when this thing juices, it's going to juice, and it's going to juice fast. And that was why I was highlighting them as bounce trades. Okay, I'm going to leave it at that. You know, market did what it had to do today. It, it did what we expected, and it it's what it needed to do. So, I, I'm looking for this market to try to you know work a little bit higher. But these turns are always difficult, and these gyrations uh, you know that we were looking at here, uh, I would think that you want to expect those as being quite possible, right? Big fast moves intraday, you know, up and down. The key is going to get, be to get back over about 1835, 1836. If you do that, anybody still short is going to have to start to cover because this market's still, on the intermediate term time frame, bullish as well as the long term. Folks, thanks for joining me. Tell a friend, tell two. You know, if you, if you, if you don't trade with me, if you don't get the services, there is a way to get them free. Just earn free services. Click on it. Check it out. I'll see you next time. Have a great night. Take care of yourself. Until then. I'm L.A. This is and was your daily T.A. wrap. Have a great night, and I'll see you. Good night.